This is um, some photos of Mum. She's beautiful in that, isn't she? Gorgeous. Yeah. I really couldn't have asked for a better mum, really. I just feel like, as a person, she's just got the biggest heart, always laughing, always joking, just really strong, really independent as a parent. You know, I would always kind of go... And... But then, Jane's mother became ill and needed more and more care. Maria was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, the most common form of dementia. Eventually, she could barely communicate and needed help with almost every aspect of her life, including personal care. Hello! I kept her at home, living independently for as long as I could. She started falling over a lot, and then one day just came round in the morning to find that she hadn't moved at all from her bed, and she couldn't move. Jane reluctantly picked a care home for her mother, a care home called Ash Court. Even though the CQC said Ash Court was excellent, Jane began to worry about her mother. Six weeks in after her arriving at Ash Court, I noticed that she had bruising on her arms, um, bruising on her hands. It was like fingerprint bruising, really, now. When I look back, it's like small fingerprint bruising. Jane was told Maria was bruising easily because she was taking aspirin. Months later, Jane was still worried. She decided she had to do something. And she just seemed so upset and down, and I just felt like the only way I'm going to know is if I record it. I wasn't even thinking anything at the time. I just thought I just wanted to see what my mum's life was like, so we just decided to buy this small digital camera. It just looks like a digital clock. Jane's first attempts to film in her mother's bedroom failed. The camera was either positioned so that it only saw the bottom of the bed or its memory ran out. Then, on June the 17th, the camera worked. Everyone who entered Maria's bedroom for more than a few seconds was recorded. This is two nights in Maria Worrell's life at Ash Court. This is then putting my mum to bed. Yeah. At 5.30? Yeah, well, I'm quite shocked it's 5.30, actually. Yeah. I, thought, I thought it was um, a bit later than that. Because normally they would have done sort of 6.37, which is still early, yeah. but 5.30 is really early. The two carers from the Philippines lift Maria by her shoulders. <sighs> Although Jane has watched the footage before, this is the first time I've seen it. So I've just dumped her on the bed. Dumped her. And she doesn't know what's happening. And she's got arthritis. So then oh, they've just chucked her legs on the bed as well. Her and then walked off. And they're not speaking to you. No, they're at speaking all. in Filipino, but that's because I've never known what they were saying. We've translated what they're saying over Jane's mum. It's unclear what they're talking about. But very little is about Maria or her care. How frightening for her. She looks, she looks bewildered. Mm. Oh, well, I can see they've hurt her now. Absolutely. And throw a bag, on, bag her on her head. Lovely. And that, that oh, pulling like my this. Goodness. Her wrists are really sore. But all her joints are really sore. So all of that yanking and chucking. It's as though she's and, cattle or something. Yeah, it's no, just totally. like you see farmers doing that when it's. Oh, gosh. They should be putting a sheet under Maria to move her, not yanking her. Specially designed slip sheets were in Maria's bedroom. And you see all these things oh. like where i saw the bruises now make sense because it was all fingerprint marks and on the hand so you the know, bruises now that's them dragging gripping her by the arm that's tool. supposed to be her and that's their going job to bed you know that's your evening later that same night a different carer briefly visits maria <laughs> 
and comes back 40 minutes later with a colleague. There's no greeting for Maria when these two carers arrive to bathe her. So again, there's no sort of, hi Maria, you know, we've come in, we're just going to... They switch the TV on for their benefit. And this is the whole time she's been in bed since 5.30 till now, just lying yeah. staring at the ceiling. Nothing. Yeah. Nine hours later, early morning, the same two carers are back, this time to give Maria her morning bath. Maria has been in bed for 13 hours. Yeah, this is the morning. morning. I think it's the, um, yeah, the same two that you've just seen. So they're probably coming to the end of their shift. The carers start talking about life at Ashcourt and their colleagues. They don't paint a happy picture. While they're talking, Maria tries to resist them removing her sheets, so they pull harder. She's just ripping just her sheets. She's ripping the sheets off. The way they just, just grab hold of her limbs. Look at that, it's just that, that whole body. They just slapped her Slapping away again. again yeah. They soon begin talking about their low wage. What do you expect? And after that, they pay you £6.50. Or £6.70. That's where you start. I'm going to stay there. Enjoy your sleep. The carer is wishing Maria a good sleep, if only between her morning bath at 6.30 and her breakfast two hours later. We don't know if Maria slept or just stared at the ceiling until one of the two carers who the night before put her to bed roughly walks in. She's here to feed Maria. Later, after breakfast, staff did take Maria out of her room as usual, but by then Jane's camera had stopped working. Its last recording is at 9 a.m. Well, no word of a greeting, no, no good morning, just walk into the room. And that TV's been off the whole time. Yeah. And, I, and I specifically told them, look, don't just leave a line and let her have a TV or a magazine or something. It's porridge. She's also got a cooked breakfast there as well. Just nothing. The carer starts giving Maria breakfast, then breaks off to switch on the TV so she can watch it while feeding her. So she's finally put the telly on. <laughs> oh, because she's looking at yeah. it. Yeah. That's why. There's no, no speech at all. And there's this switching from mouth spoonfuls of porridge to back to <sighs> scrambled egg and whatever else it is that... You know oh. what I mean? Maria is being fed too quickly. The carer gives a spoonful roughly every 13 seconds. Even when a carer that Jane believes is a nurse passes through to help give medication. She's choking because it's all getting shoveled in. It's not the only time Maria's feeders are impatient. On the second night, Jane's secret camera was filming when Maria was given this drink. I'll bring her out. And that, that's her drink for the evening. What can she do? She can't write down help, she can't say help, she can't get up and run away. She's just got to endure it. And that's what's horrible. Maria's first day being secretly filmed at Ash Court is over. I mean, to me, it's, it's the whole sequence. It's the. It's everything. It's, it's being put to bed in that manner of, like, you know, it's painful, you're thrown into bed, you're not, nothing's told what's happening. It's a new day, it should be a new beginning. There's, again, there's no communication, it's shoveled in. There's no joy, there's no tenderness, there's no empathy, there's just nothing. I was horrified to see that, that that, that was a day in the life of my mother. Jane took the seat. Three days later, Jane put the camera back in her mother's room for a second night. It's just after 7 p.m., and against her daughter's requests and the home's policies, a male carer is alone with Maria. He's giving her her night bath. 
Well, he just shouldn't even be in there. No, he shouldn't. And she's frightened already. Yeah. Oh, gosh, he's just pushing her over. So I don't know how he's actually got her into the bed. No. <gasps> Playing it again, I can't see anything that could have provoked him to hit Maria. He mocks her. He's twisting her arm. Gosh, sorry, that's really going to be me. This male carer is 30-year-old Jonathan Aquino. Ashcourt hired him in the Philippines where he was a qualified nurse and arranged his work permit to come to the UK in 2008. It's a quarter past seven. After hitting her, Jonathan continues giving Maria her nightly bath. Imagine what your mother must have been feeling, thinking. Terrified. What can she do? She can't shout for help. And he pulls her off the bed. Remember, Jonathan shouldn't even be in Maria's room and Maria should be moved by two carers using slip sheets. Good grief. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a head. Oh, gosh. Oh, dear. In all, Jonathan slaps Maria six times. Just one final slap just to make sure. Mm. During the seven minutes Jonathan is filmed in Maria's room, he never speaks except to swear or to mock by imitating her. That's hell. It is hell. Absolute hell. Oh dear. Yvonne Grant lived her whole life in South London. She grew up not far from the care home. She always used to talk fondly of when she was you know, living at home with mum and dad when she was younger of her sisters. It's the area where she raised her family and worked, eventually becoming head of dressmaking at one of Croydon's large stores. It's December 2012. The X Factor is on the TV. Tonight, it's the X Factor 98-year-old Yvonne Grant is finishing a cup of tea. Just before 9.30, Yvonne needs the toilet. She can no longer walk, but getting to the toilet is really important to her. It's a matter of dignity. She needs help. Yvonne started calling almost half an hour ago. She doesn't know her family has left a secret camera in her room to check on her care. She is now desperate. Yvonne is just a short distance from the nurse's station. Staff should know she doesn't use her call bell. She calls out instead. But no one is answering her. Another 18 minutes tick by, still no help. In Yvonne's room, the unattended camera counts the minutes as she waits.
Finally, after more than an hour, a care worker appears. Her name is Sikovia. Despite Yvonne's long wait, Sikovia doesn't seem interested in helping her to the ensuite toilet. You're wearing a pad. What do you want to do in the toilet? Well, I'm not sure. Do you? Yes. Well, you've got a pad here. Yes, I couldn't do it, isn't it? Oh, please. Sikovia and a colleague are telling her to defecate in her incontinence pad, the last thing Yvonne wants. <laughs> She hated the fact that she couldn't walk to the toilet. She used to say it was so undignified. She would always make sure that she used the toilet. She wouldn't, you know, as she say, degrade herself of using a pad. Again, Yvonne has to wait. Would you give us five minutes? You will come back. Yeah, we will. No, please. Five minutes. With that promise, Sokovia leaves. Fifteen minutes later, there's no help, and now the light's switched off. Oh, this is what this is. Please let me use the toilet. Oh, God, please, please. Consultant nurse Lynn Fair is an expert on elderly care. She's advised the government on protecting vulnerable older people. This lady, she probably, like most of us, haven't had an accident since we were two or three years old. So you've got the, the, the dehumanisation, the emotional trauma, the physical pain. This is a type of assault, but not the type of assault people understand. After more than 20 minutes in the dark, an hour and three quarters after Yvonne started calling out, Sikovia returns with another care assistant. You have to go to the toilet, don't you? You're going to have to help us. No, I want to In the darkness, they try to make a desperate Yvonne, who hasn't walked for years, walk to the toilet. I want the toilet, too. Are you going to help us? Yes, I want to. They should be using a hoist, when they realize she can't walk, they sound disgusted. You can't even walk to the toilet. Listen, Yvonne, we've got other people, yeah? They're waiting for us to do. So now, whatever you want to do to the toilet, do it in the pad. They drop her back on the bed and complain they're short-staffed. I want to use the top of the toilet. You do, just do it in the pad. When you finish, press the bell, will come and change you. That's not what Yvonne wants, and she still hasn't been to the toilet. Oh, this is terrible. She's upset, and again, she's alone. Don't shout me in. Please shout me in. Don't shout me in. Please. Please don't shout me in. Two and a half hours after Yvonne first called out, a different member of staff, a nurse, finally takes her to the toilet. On that Saturday night, Yvonne calls out nurse 321 times. She pleads for the toilet 45 times and bangs her cup on 26 occasions. Morning, Joe. The test of any home and its staff is how they look after residents with the most complex needs. People like Joan Madison. Right, I'm going to get you up, Joan. Oh, I'm not so I know. Alex is told she's one of the old deanery's more challenging residents. That's mum at about 15. That's mum at about 17. Beautiful. She is, isn't she? Stunning. Young woman, yeah. They're how I think of my mum. I'm very aware of how different she is these days. She also looked after others as a social worker, but now she has early stage dementia and is paralyzed down her right side from a stroke in her 50s. She's got this fierce independence. She thinks she still gets herself up and gets herself washed and gets herself dressed. She cannot do any of those things, though in her mind she thinks she still can. In the behavior notes written by staff, 
Joan is often described as aggressive. She can lash out if frustrated, and Jill has been increasingly worried. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fair but there are definitely ways of dealing with her where she's a pussycat. Yeah. Ways of doing it wrong, and all hell breaks loose. I've had the home ring me to say they've been experiencing problems with mum, being very difficult, quite obstructive with her care, and kicking out and hurting staff. And I said, well, that's very unlike my mum. She can kick off, but it's usually when she's been hurt. And I'm saying, you need to look at the reasons why. It was Lorna who first took Alex in to help with Joan's morning care. It's aggressive. It's behaviour, oh, that behaviour recording. Oh, OK. Yeah, so just, she's going to hurt you. Hello, Joan. Good morning, my love. Joan needs to be washed and dressed. Just hold her, otherwise she's going to hurt me. <laughs> Lorna is physically restraining Joan and asks Alex to help. Hold her. Hold her. I don't want that flat feet on me. Oh. I'm going to dry you. Well, I'm going to dry it. Thank you. I'm going to dry it. Miss Pearl! Lorna should be diffusing the situation. Instead, she's winding Joan up. Do it, do it, shut it. Hi. A bit louder. Fine. Oh, I can't hold that You're just like a tiger. Oh, well, you're a bloody idiot. You and not me. Good morning, Joan. On 28 mornings, our unattended camera in Joan's room shows how care assistants start her day. Joan's paralyzed right side is painful, but on too many days, she's pulled roughly and she reacts. Joan's a determined woman who's overcome disability but she's treated like a child. Treated spitefully. Embarrassed if you were my mum. Her knuckles wrapped. Well, you care. She's told she smells. Oh, no, she stinks. Well, I do stink. Oh, no, I do, because I'm working here. It makes you stink. Joan can be difficult, but this shouldn't be happening. Why well, are you doing this? We need Why to get you, are you doing this? Get your nightdress off, Joan. They're just doing their job, darling. But with Lorna and Anita, the battle with Joan is predictable. Lorna throws the bag strap at Joan's head. And she's left to struggle on her own. We needed to show Jill what the secret camera had picked up. It's an insight into what can happen when she's not there. I've had inklings, gut feelings, I'm bitterly disappointed. I spent two years with my sister looking for somewhere for mum to go, and I've let her go there. And have that happen to her. This type of abuse is very insidious. This is hidden, this is like psychological domestic abuse. <laughs> She sees the senior care worker, Anita, with another assistant about to get Joan up. Right, I will call the police. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I needed the hoist, so I went to look for it in Joan Madison's room. Um, the hoist was in there and Anita and another care assistant were trying to get her ready. I could tell there was a lot of aggression in the room at that stage and I couldn't stay, so I decided to leave um, a secret camera in the room before I left. We shouldn't have to put up with this, this is ridiculous. The moment I'm dealing with an alley cat. Right, um, right, you need to go that way, Joan. Anita seems increasingly exasperated by Joan as they start to dress her. Joan! Good Joan! Joan! Well, you are a vicious, nasty old lady. Good. And Joan appears to have scratched her. Ouch! <laughs> You won't be saying that you've had a bit of security. <laughs> the situation is escalating. She threatens Joan. Oh, 
going to make an official complaint. I don't get paid enough for being no, assaulted no. constantly. Did you please put that under my head properly? No. no you me. Then Anita does this. No! She slaps no. Joan. Joan! No, you to me. Then Anita does this. No! She slaps no. Joan. Joan! Did she just slap her? Can I see that bit again? Oh, she can. <gasps> she did. I mean, that's assault. She's just assaulted that lady. But who would believe Joan? Because Joan is labelled by everybody that I've seen so far as someone who's aggressive, she's nasty, she's an alley cat. I feel like I've let her down. I've let everybody down that trusted me. I begged, I pleaded, I fought like a tiger to get the funding to get her in there. The care home says that Anita has been summarily dismissed and other disciplinary proceedings will be completed shortly after the Panorama broadcast. The home told Panorama as soon as they were informed of our evidence they took immediate action. They suspended eight staff and hired an independent law firm to carry out a full investigation. Our priority remains the health and well-being of our residents and we have more than 200 dedicated members of staff who remain committed to the highest standards of care.